Alright guys, what's up? Welcome to your first physics tutorial with me, Travis. We're going to say 1.1.0 or 1. So basically what this course is going to be is the same level of physics that I had to take in the university a couple years ago. I'm going to be using the same textbook. So what it's going to be is a university level calculus-based physics course. Uh, if I remember correctly, there wasn't too much calculus in, in this course, but if there is, uh, you know, I'll try and explain that as well. So you guys don't really need calculus for this course. But um, that being said, I'm going to follow the same curriculum that I had to follow, which means we have to cover some boring stuff in the beginning here. Uh, what we're going to be covering is significant figures. Now, if I was teaching this course in a university, I wouldn't really care about significant figures, but some professors do, and you'll get like an F on your paper or your test when you thought you should have gotten an A, all because of significant figures. And that's what we're going to be covering uh, because, like I said, some professors care about that, so I thought I'd teach it. We're also going to be talking about the international system units, uh, the French say system international. Um, so uh, us Americans kind of switch it around for some reason. SI um, is what that's called, the units that we need to use. And we're also going to talk about scientific notation. So those will probably be the first three, wow, terrible handwriting that you guys are going to have to get used to. I apologize. But those are going to be the first three lessons that we're going to be talking about in this series. Feel free to skip them. That's kind of the basic general stuff. But I thought I'd throw it in the series anyways because most likely you'd have to listen through this kind of stuff uh, your first day of, of physics. So let's get into significant figures and what that's all about, what that business means. My spelling's terrible too, so you guys don't worry about that. Significant figures, that's what we're talking about. Now, basically, when we have some information given to us, like it'll give us the force of something, it'll give us the mass of something, um, it's going to give us you know, some numbers, like 1.01 .01 meters, something like that. Right now, we aren't going to really worry about the units. I'm just going to throw out some numbers here. Anything pretty much with the decimal place is pretty easy to figure out the number of significant figures. For example, this first one has three significant figures, which we'd expect are 1, 2, and 3. So. Those are our three significant figures. The problem comes when we have a whole number that doesn't have a decimal place and has some zero values. Now for this example, this only has one significant figure because this one is the only one that counts as a significant figure. These zeros do not count. So it's kind of weird. But uh, we only have one significant figure here. But again, this one has a decimal place. We have a zero at the end. But since it has a decimal place and this zero, is on the far right side we can include that so again that has three significant figures again sorry for my handwriting so now comes another example where we have some zeros here um, which wouldn't count if we didn't have the decimal place and some numbers after the decimal place but since we do have a number all these will count as well so we have four significant figures again the 500 is just kinda like the 1000 that we had up here only the five will count so we only have one significant figure. But see, if we wanted this to have more significant figures, we could just say a point zero at the end, and then it would be four significant numbers, or oops, point zero, uh, or four, it doesn't matter. But now we'd have four significant numbers for this value here. Um, again, if we look at this number, it's a whole number. There's nothing after the decimal place. But the zeros in between numbers do count as a significant number. Um, between these two fives here. So we have actually three significant numbers for 50,500. Now you're probably saying, okay, I think I can kind of understand that. It's kind of weird, but why are we learning this? Why is this important? And you know, what does a significant number mean? Well, that's what we're going to get into. I'm going to show you a quick example. So let's say we pretend to open our textbook. We read a question that says, uh, you stand on your neighbor's cat because it keeps peeing on your porch. How much force are you exerting on the cat? Uh, you know, kind of a standard textbook question, and it's going to give us inf some information like your weight or your mass. We're going to say so, mass is equal to 100 kilograms, and acceleration is going to be the acceleration of gravity. Uh, right now, we don't really have to understand this stuff, but I'm just showing you guys an example. So, acceleration of gravity is 9.81. Uh, what is it, meters per second squared. And the equation that we're going to be using is force is equal to mass times acceleration. Again, you guys won't really have to remember this right now, but, you know, it's kind of a simple equation and we're going to be using it a lot. So 
you guys want to remember that equation, go for it. So right now we're trying to figure out how much force we're exerting on the cat or how much force is being acted upon the cat. Um, from us standing on it. And it's a pretty simple equation, so we just plug in these this information here. We get 981 newtons, and this is uh, this newton, if you guys are wondering, we haven't really talked about the units yet, but newtons is the same as saying kilograms times meters per second squared. So um, since that's what our units are, kilograms times uh, meters per second squared, we're just gonna exit out this stuff and just say newtons because it means the exact same thing. So now you turn this answer into your professor and you're like, okay, I nailed that one, that was an easy one. Um, and you get your paper back and he's like, F, and that doesn't stand for force, that stands for fail. Um, and what's happening is we didn't consider our significant numbers that we have been given. So the textbook gave us this information, our mass and our acceleration, and when we figure out you know, our answer according to this equation here, we forgot to figure out how many significant figures each of these uh, items have. So if we look at it now, we're like, okay, 100 kilograms, that only has one significant figure. This one has three significant figures. And now what we need to do is we need to convert our answer to have the same amount of significant figures as our lowest of the information given. So our lowest number of significant figures is one for this example. So we have to convert our answer to have only one significant figure. So basically we're gonna round this off to 1000 newtons. And that would be the answer the professor is looking for. But now you guys are probably wondering why this is, like why do we have to do this, like figuring out how many significant figures it has. So the reason why we have to use significant figures and why it's important is it's all about accuracy. So for example, if me and you are just chilling there, I pick up a rock and I throw it, and I'm like, okay dude, I want you to go measure how far that rock is from right here where we're standing. You'd be like, are you kidding me? I'm not doing that, that sounds ridiculous. There's no point to that. Um, so I go inside and then two seconds later, you come inside with a piece of paper that says 500 feet. I was like, wow, that was pretty good. That was a pretty good throw. And you're like, okay, I don't really care. Then I get kind of curious because I'm like, dude, I don't think I can throw that far. So I go out there with like a tape measure and I like measure it. And I'm like, I was like, what? It only went 21 feet. How did he come up with 500? So I pick up the rock and move it to be 492 feet, which is a precise answer because I got my tape measure out and I measured it exactly 492. So this is pretty freaking close to the exact number. Um, there might be, you know, like inches and, you know, stuff like that as well. But then I can justify your answer because I'll be like, oh, he probably just rounded it to 500. And that makes sense because that's pretty close to what I came up with. Um, but, you know, it's not, it's not that accurate. It's pretty close to my number that I came up with, but he probably just rounded it. So when we get information like this, we don't know if the person rounded to 500 or what. So basically we only justify the accuracy based off this number. We're gonna say, hey, it's around 500 feet. It could be anywhere from 450 feet to what, 549 feet based off this information given here. So I'm just gonna erase this here to make some more space. But let's say you wrote down instead of 500 without anything else, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna trick him even more and make him think that I've made a really precise measurement. I'm gonna say 500.1. And I'd be like, holy cow, he really got into it and measured exactly how far through this rock. And now I know that there's four significant numbers. And so this, you know, even though this might not be a completely accurate statement, it's a lot more accurate than the one that I had previously. And as you can see, this range is much smaller. We knew, We know for a fact that we threw it over 500 feet. We don't know exactly how precise it is because we only have this point one here, uh, but we know it's within this range right here. Whereas if we didn't have that point one, if it was just 500, our range would have been, you know, this kind of a range, which has almost a hundred feet difference between it. So that's kind of why significant numbers are important uh, when looking at information because we want to know how precise or how accurate. Um, the information is and we tell that by the number of significant figures and uh, we also want our answers to, to kind of coordinate with the information that we get so that's why we want our answers to have the same amount of significant figures 
as the lowest number of the information that we've been given. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing, guys. I know it kind of sounded confusing, and I'm kind of confused now, but hopefully you guys kind of understand significant figures a little bit more and how to use them and why they're important. Um, but, you know, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thanks again for watching, guys. Have a good one.